Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 593. Please turn to it, page 593, and today is our lesson number 51. Yesterday we finished section number 3, I believe it was, on day number 50, which was the end of the one-third of our work. Altogether, we're going to make, we're going to have 150 lessons. I, I, it takes me five clips, five videos to finish one section, and each exam has three sections. Therefore, each exam will take 15 videos to make, and there are 10 exams in the book. There are 10 tests. Altogether, there are going to be 150 videos. Yesterday was the, was the uh, end of a third of the work, one third, one third down, two third to go. Let's take a look at it. Number 51. Now this particular section, you have to pay attention, on the top of the section, as I always remind you when we get to this particular section, I always remind you that on the top of the section it tells you there are 18, there are 18 questions. And I always tell you that they are arranged in the order of difficulty from easy, medium and hard. Just excuse me, I'm still here. I am not, I am not going anywhere, I'm still here. And I always remind you that they are arranged in an easy, medium and hard. But in this particular section, you have to be careful because there are, just because there are 18 questions, you mustn't automatically assume that the first six are easy, the next six are medium, and the last six are hard. That is not the case in this particular section. Why? Because there are two types of questions. The first eight questions they're going to give us are simple multiple choice questions. First eight or first, how many? Yeah, first eight. Multiple choice questions. And because there are only eight of them, the scale is like this. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Easy, medium, and hard. And then starting with question number nine, we're starting with question number nine, they gave us ten gradient questions. And because there are gradient questions, there are different types of questions, the, sc the scale starts all over again. The scale starts all over again. And there are ten of them, which means we have nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and then 16, 17, and 18. Easy, easy, medium, and hard. Let's get going. Enough of the talk. Number one. So what I'm trying to point out is that even though there are only eight of them, they're going to go up in the difficulty very quickly. Number one. We're given a symbol here, 3 plus some symbol here, divided by 2. We are told equals 7 and a half. Well, 7 and a half if you were to write that in a uh, fraction, the same as 15 over 2. Which means on the top, we need 15. We have 3 already, which means the triangle equals 12. Triangle or whatever they give you, the diamond, equals 12. Because, because the 12... Because the, because the 12 plus the 3 will equal 15. I think I'm explaining too much. It's very straightforward, very simple. Of course, it's very simple. It's number 1. Let's go to number 2. Now here's the deal with number two. If you are one of those people who always has trouble figuring out different angles in a parallel line when, it's, when, those, when the two parallel lines are being intersected by a third line, or even more complicated scenario where they give you three parallel lines and then they are all intersected by, by a fourth line and you have to figure out which angle equals which. And if you have trouble sometimes figuring out which one is which, here's what I want you to do. So for question number two, Question number two itself is very simple, but I'm talking about more complicated questions involving the same concept. I would like you to watch Geometry, Geometry for SAT, Day 8. Just type in this tag, Geometry for SAT, Day 8. It will say a whole bunch of other things in it. It will say GRE, other stuff in it. Pay no attention to it. Just look for this tag. Just type in this tag and the video will pop right up. It will say parallel lines in it, in the title. Watch that video. Make sure you watch the entire video and understand all the concepts. You understand? Here, we are, here's, here's the situation. We are, we are told this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the question simply is, 
if L is parallel to M, which it is, we, as we can see, L is line L is parallel to M, then the sum of the measures of angle 2 and 4 must equal the sum of the measures of which two angles? Plus 2 and 4 is right here. 2 and 4 are right here. The sum of the then the sum of the measures of angle 2 and 4 must equal the sum of the measures of which two following pairs of angles. Angle 2 angle 2 equals angle 2 here equals angle 6 and angle 4 here equals angle 8. Again I'm not going to explain in too much details for two reasons. First of all for most of you it's going to be very straightforward question, very simple questions and secondly for those of you who, who do have trouble with this thing you can always go and watch that video as I told you and you will understand the basic concepts behind it. So angle number 4 here, this angle equals angle 8 and angle 2 equals angle 6 and therefore the sum of 2 and 4 must equal 6 and 8. Must equal 6 and 8 and the answer is D. That's it. Let's move on then to the next page. Page number 594. Page 594, let's see what we have here. Excuse me just one second. I left my cup way over there at the other end of the table. Number three. Here we have employed people. Here we have unemployed people. Then we are given a total. We are given men. We are told it's 27,000 women, it's left blank, and the total here is 48,000. Before we do any work at all, we can see immediately that if the men are 27 and the total is 48, then women, women must be 48 minus 27, or 21,000. So that part is done. Because 21,000, 21,000 plus 28,000, uh, 27,000 is going to give us our 48,000 total number of people. What they're asking here is the number of unemployed female. Let's, let's find out. So this is 21,000 we just found out. That are all together 21,000 uh, female. Uh, and in this column, uh, well, all together 21,000 employed female. And in the total here they are told that we have 21,000 21,500 total number of female. If we have total 21,500 total number of female of which 21,000 are employed, that, mu that must mean that there must be 500 female with no job. There must be 500 unemployed female. And that's it. It's an easy question. It's not a big deal. Let's go to number four then. So the answer here is A. Let's go on to number four. Listen, I'm going to raise this part. I need the room and it's coming in my way. Number four is also classified as a medium question. Let's see what we can do here. It says a group of student, a group of students wash car to raise money. The net income A, we are representing the net income with the symbol A, raised by washing K cars is given by the function. We are given some relationship between number of cars washed and the amount of money that there is. And the relationship is this. The amount of money that there is depends on see this is this this is read as A is a is a function of K. And what does that mean? It simply means that the amount of money that is raised, in other words A is what we're calling the amount of money, A depends on K. That's what it means. A is a function of K means A depends on K. Now listen, I always have this tendency of turning this thing to a long lecture. If you are interested in learning the concept behind it, because you see as I've explained to you many times, many a time, if I start go explaining everything from scratch in every single problem, this will become a very tedious process. So if you are one of those people who have trouble understanding the concept of function, and what does it mean when they go around saying f of x, what does it mean for something to be a function of something? What does an independent variable mean? What does a dependent variable mean? If you have trouble with these kind of basic concepts, basic concepts, here's what you want to do. Type in this tag, what is a 
function. Type this in along with my name because there might be thousands of other people who are doing the same thing. Along with my name, Kishwani. Type in what is the function and watch that video. I remember, I remember distinctly having done a video, a long video, on the concept of function. And you might find something fruitful in it. So that's what it is. The amount of money that is raised depends on the number of cards that are sold and the relationship is this. 4K minus 30. 4K minus 30. If the group wash 15 cards, what is the net amount they raise? What is the net amount they raise? What does it mean by net? What does it mean by net amount? Did you ever wonder? What does it mean by? Why don't they just say what's the amount? Well, why don't they just say? What did it go? If a group wash 15 cars, what is the amount they raise? Why don't they just say that? Why do they have to? Oh, a word comes to my mind. Why do they have to qualify that statement? Why do they have to put this word net in it? We'll learn this word qualify in a second. Uh, we'll learn this word. Uh, this word has a special meaning. Not qualify as in to qualify for a job, but to qualify in a statement has a different meaning. I'll come to that in a second. So why do they put the word net in it? Understand that concept. And in order for us to under understand the concept behind that, why do they use that word net? Why do they have to put the adjective in front of it? We have to understand what this relationship says in English language. And for that, let's first start out with this part, this negative 30 part. What do you suppose this part means in the context of real life? In the context of real life, what that tells us is that these bunch of kids, these bunch of kids are washing cars, maybe they are raising money for charity, who knows, and they are washing cars, maybe for their local church or maybe Salvation Army, who knows what. Bunch of high school kids, uh, one day, this, uh, one weekend decided they're going to stand inside of the corner and wash cars and whatever money they raise, they're going to give it to the local soup kitchen. A noble idea. What does the 30 mean? That 30, because, because it has a negative sign, that 30 actually represents their total fixed cost. I'm making it very complicated. Total, let's just call it cost. Let's keep it simple. That's their cost. You cannot just simply watch the stand in the side of the co co corner of the street and, uh, and just expect to start washing cars. You have to buy the soaps. You have to buy the detergent, you have to buy the sponges, you maybe you have to buy some gloves, maybe you need to, I mean, who knows, maybe you need to pay uh, the rent fee for somebody's land that you're using while you're standing there. I doubt that very much, but still you will have to buy the supplies. The amount of supplies that they will buy, the, the, the supplies that they need in order for them to do the job will cost them $30. This is the money needed to buy Supplies. What does this 4 represent? This 4 is the slope of the line. If you were to draw this on a, on a graph, this 4 is the slope. What does it, this, this represent? This tells us, this tells us the every time, this 4 tells us that, every, you see, this is the K, number of cars. So this 4 tells us that each time, each time we wash a car, the amount of money we have, amount of money we raise goes up by four dollars. In other words, they're charging four dollars to wash the car. That's what this says. It says these kids are charging four dollars to wash a car, which is typically, which, which is normal obviously, four dollars, five dollars, something like that. But every time they wash a car, that four dollars is not going to go to, towards whatever the cause that they are raising money for because first they have to subtract the thirty dollars that they spent to buy the supplies. So they are going to have to wash a few cars in the beginning, a number of cars in the beginning just to break even. Can you tell me what the break even point here is? The break even point is between seven and eight. If they, buy, if they wash seven cars, you see watch, watch what happens. Okay, It says 4k minus 30. And this is the amount of money they're going to raise. And the amount of money they're going to raise, they're calling it A, A dollars. So if they wash seven cars, four times seven minus 30, they will still end up losing two dollars. So if they stand there all day and they manage to wash only seven cars, they will not have raised any money. As a matter of fact, they will have lost two dollars. If they wash eight cars, if it turns out that they only washed eight cars, 
8 times 4 is 32 and now they will have $2 for their charity because they have to pay $30 for the supplies. The question here is very simple. The question is how much money will they raise if they, if they wash 15 cars? Well that's very straightforward. You replace K by 15. 15 times 4 is 60 minus 30 gives us the net amount of 30. You see net amount. Net amount. This is the net amount. This amount, that, this amount that you see here is called the gross. For those of you, I know you are preparing for SAT so you are young kids, but for those of you who do have a job, you will know that when you get your paycheck, you have the gross pay and then whatever deductions there are for taxes and social security and so forth, after all the deductions are taken care of, what you are left with is called your net pay or your take home. You see the net amount and the gross amount, hence the use of the word net. The question was, if the group washed 15 cars, what is the net amount they raised? The answer is net amount they will raise is $30. The gross amount they will have is $60, but then they have to subtract 30 for the supplies. That's all. Let's go to number five. Now, of course, we could have very easily, I could have very easily to have told you, stood here and told you to plug in 15 for K and be done with it and get the answer, but as you watch more and more and more of my video, you will see that we, I'm not interested in simply solving the problem. We are not here to simply solve the problem. You don't, you don't want to sit there and just watch somebody solve one problem after another. I want you to sink your teeth into it. I think that's the expression. I want you to understand it. Understand the concept behind it. Appreciate it. Do you understand? So that's what that is. Let's go to the next one. Enough of that. Number five is the medium question. I do not know why it qualifies as a medium, but here is what they are told. We are told that x times r equals v. We are also told that v equals k times r. Now, I know that before you stand, sit there and, and start uh, saying this and that, I know that when I say, when I say v, because I'm not pronouncing that letter correctly, I know that in my native language, in English language, you have two letters. Here we go again, v and w. In my native language, for both of these letters, we only have one sound, which is why I cannot pronounce the word letter, which is why I cannot pronounce this letter. Do you understand? People ask me what I drive, and I tell them I drive Volvo, and they look at me and say, what the hell is a Volvo? But, you know, such is life. I know if I slow down, and if I pay attention, it comes out correctly. Volvo, I believe, is how it's pronounced, V. But uh, if I'm not paying attention, it's just V. Anyway, so that's what this is. So this is equals to V and this equals to V, which implies if this quantity equals V and this quantity equals V, that must imply that X times R must equal K times R. Obviously. And the question simply is, which of the following equals to K? Well, you want to solve for K, divide both sides of the equation by R. If you divide both sides of the equation by R, R drops out and X equals K. The question was, which of the following equals K? Okay, equals x. The answer is d. The answer is d. Let's go to number six, shall we? Number six. Number six again is a medium question. It says eggs in a certain basket are either white or brown. Either white or brown. And we are told that the ratio of the white eggs to the number of brown eggs is two to three. The ratio is two to three. Question simply is, if each of the following could be the number of eggs in the basket, except which one? There are five answer choices. What they're telling us is that one number could possibly not be, could not possibly be the total number of eggs in a basket. And our job is to locate that number. What we have to understand here is that because of the fact that there are two of one kind and three of the other kind, the total parts, total parts are five which means we can have four of one kind and six of the other kind, that is possible. We can have a total of 10, we can have 20 of one kind and 30 of the other kind, we can have a total of 50, we can have eight of one kind, you see how I went from here to here, eight, which is two times four is eight. Since we multiply two by four to get eight, let's do it down here. We can multiply both of them by four and we can have eight and 12, eight plus 12 is 20, or we can have, or we can have six and multiplied by three, six and nine, we can have 15, 
or we can have 4 and 6, we can have 10. What do you notice? What we notice is that the total always has to be a multiple of 5. Because 5 is the total number of parts, therefore the total number of x has to be divisible by 5. And that's all. The total number of x cannot possibly be some number that cannot be divided by 5 because you won't be able to break it up into 2 in the ratio of 2 to 3. So all you have to do is go through the answer choices and look at one answer choice, which is not a multiple of 5. And that's 12. 12 cannot be divided by 5. 10 is possible. Well, right here, 10 is possible. You see, 10 is possible. We can have 4 of one kind and 6 of the other. This is the ratio of 2 to 3. This is the ratio of 2 to 3. If you divide to 4 by, if you divide all of them by 2 here, and we get 2 to 3, which is 5. The next answer is 15. 15 is possible. Right here, 15 is possible. 6 and 9 we can have. Then they give us 30. 30 is possible. How will we get 30? 30 is very possible. 30 is, if you want 30, how do we convert this 2 into a 30? Well, multiply it by 15. If you multiply this by 15, you have to multiply this by 15, multiply this by 15. Oh no, we want 30, sorry. We don't want number of y x to be 30, we want total to be 30. I wasn't paying attention. We want the total number of x to be 30, so multiply the total by 6, multiply this by 6, multiply this by 6, and you'll end up with 12, 12 white eggs, 18 brown eggs, for a total of 30 x. 30 is possible. 60 is also possible. 60 is, 60 is a multiple of 5. For 60 you will have twice as many. 24, 36 and 60. But 12 is not possible. It is not possible for this basket to contain 12 eggs given the fact that the ratio of white eggs to brown eggs is 2 to 3. It is impossible. It cannot be 12 or 13 or 11 or 17. It must be some multiple of 5. The answer is B. The answer is B. And that was the, question, that was the end of question number 6. Let me quickly talk about this word that we have put down here. Uh, I forget now what context we say. I was going to use it here to qualify in statement. Oh, when they were talking about net amount in question number 4, they say if the group washed 15 cars, what is the net amount? Why, do, why couldn't they just simply say amount? Well, we just understood it. We just couldn't say amount because that would have meant a gross amount. They had to qualify that statement by saying that we want net amount. What does it mean to qualify the statement? To qualify the statement means to put a condition on it, to put a constraint on it, to restrict it. If you're interested in learning this word properly, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, if you want to expand your vocabulary, if you want to get a greater, uh, if you want to better, get a better score in the reading portion of the exam, you must have good vocabulary. Just type in day number 27. Just type in vocabulary. Vocabulary, day 27. Watch that video and you will learn the word qualify along with some other interesting and good words uh, that will help you expand your vocabulary. Do you understand? You must work, work on your vocabulary at the same time while you're preparing for the math part with me. There are also videos that deal with the grammar questions on my channel. If, you, if you're interested in raising your score, in the writing portion of the exam. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.